Hi and welcome to Home Assistant How To with Bearded Tinker. Today we are going to play with the Moe's Zigbee Smart Valve. And we'll start in a couple of seconds. Before we go any further, I really would like to thank all the members who have joined my YouTube channel. Thank you, your support really means a lot. And if you want to help the channel, you can too become the YouTube member. Just click on the join link below. But you can also help with the liking, subscribing or watching videos. Thank you very much. And now let's get started with the Moe's Smart Valve. First, let's start with the full disclosure. This item was sent to me, with no cost to me, by Banggood to make a video. And that's what I'll do. And in terms of financial gain, there is affiliated link down in the description of the video. If you use it, I will receive a small percentage based on the purchases made from you. So thank you for that. If you do it, of course. And now let's look at the details of this smart valve. First of all, I already have at my apartment smart valves, but they are not from the Bose or any other Zigbee manufacturer. They are Tado smart valves and I have also smart thermostat. And they are working great for me, but the cost of them is at least double the cost of this device. Second thing is that Tado is using a hub, and it needs a specific hub that only works with Tado devices. It doesn't use Wi-Fi, Zigbee, Z-Wave or any other standard protocol, it has proprietary protocol for communication between the hub, smart valves and smart thermostat, or smart AC controller if you have that one. So. For this device, you only need to have a typical Zigbee gateway. Any Zigbee gateway that we use will do. I myself will be using CC2652RB from Slash, but I have also tested this with CC2531. The other thing that you will need for this device to work inside Home Assistant is Zigbee2MQTT. I haven't tested and unfortunately I cannot test it if it's working with the ZHA, internal Zigbee integration but this device is definitely working with the Zigbee to MQTT. Let's look at the device and what you get. The box that I received was a little bit crumbled, but all the things inside were intact. The box includes the smart valve itself, a lot of adapters, they will be needed if you have a specific type of the valve on your radiator or not, and of course the manual. The batteries, two AA batteries were not included. If we compare the size between this device and the Tado device, this one is a little bit bigger. But I would say that I like it because it also has a lot more functions on its own menu, which is embedded inside the knob. You can set different types of temperature, for example, echo, comfort, away temperature, minimum, maximum temperature. You can set time, date, and of course, you can also set specific date related or day of the week related schedules for the temperature. But we will not be using any of that smart stuff of the smart valve, we only want to pull the data from the smart valve to our home assistant. So what is the procedure and the installation? First of all, remove any automatic or smart valve you had there before, insert two AA batteries, close the lid and just mount it to your radiator. It is a bit fiddling to mount it, but it will only take you a couple of seconds. When you mount it, the installation or the configuration of the setup process begins. I've skipped through all of the configuration and the only thing I left it to do is to check the valve. The device needs to set up or calibrate the valve. This process takes around one minute. And if I compare it to the Tado one, it takes a bit longer, but it's silent. For Tado, you will definitely hear the valve going in and out. The next step you have to do is go to your Zigbee to MQTT. Wake up the device by touching the house sign. This is also menu sign. And when the screen lights up, hold it for three or four seconds. It will then enter configuration mode. Press plus four times until you get to the menu item five, which is shown by the Wi-Fi network icon. When you are there, just press and hold the menu once again until it starts to blink. And the pairing process has started. After the Wi-Fi sign starts to blink, 
you have to go to your ZigBee to MQTT and press Permit Join to allow new devices to join the network. And the pairing process should be quick. We now have notification and one new device. Let's open it and see what this exposes, because this will later on allow us to integrate it inside Home Assistant. First thing, there is a friendly name, and I usually change it, but since I will be giving away this valve, I will not be touching it. Type is end device, meaning that it doesn't extend the network, instead it has to bind to some kind of a router. The model is TS0601. Let's click on Exposes and see what are the features this valve has. We have child lock. You can lock or unlock the device, depending if you want to enable or disable child lock. Next one is the state of the window open detection. It is currently off, but you can turn it on. And how does window open sensor work? It just detects rapid changes in the temperature or humidity. We have position. This is the position of the valve. I think that 0% means the valve is completely open, meaning that the heat can go to the pipes to your radiator. We can set the heating point. We have information about the local temperature. Is it in off, heat or out mode? This is used if you want to control the heating by hand, leave it to automatics or just turn it off. If you need to calibrate your temperature, you can use this field. Away mode will set the thermostat to specific temperature that is preset to allow apartment or house to cool down but also prevent any freezing. Preset is currently on manual. We have state for the auto lock and away mode. We also have preset days. For example, if you are traveling somewhere, you can preset the temperature for the next week, 10 days, 20 days, depending on how long you will be on your vacation or a trip. Boost time allows you to set what will be the boost time when you want to heat up the apartment. So, for example, if you select boost, it will start the heating and it will keep heating for the set period of time. In this case, 5 minutes or 300 seconds. Comfort temperature is the, let's call it like that, normal temperature. Echo temperature is lower and this can, for example, be temperature that you set and allow your apartment to cool down while you are out. Valve position can be normal, open or closed. We will leave it at normal. We also have week and setting this feature can help you, for example, preset temperatures for your week. So it can be either 5 plus 2, meaning you will have 5 days look like same, so work days, and then 2 for the weekend or 6 plus 1 or 7, meaning that all 7 days will have the same temperature presets. We have away temperature preset and of course the quality of the link. If we go to state, we will see the current state of the smart sensor. But let's look what we get inside Home Assistant. If we go to Configuration, Integrations, MQTT, select this one, this is Tuya, Radiator Valve with Thermostat, you can see what are the values we get here. So let's move this to my bearded test. Add to Lovelace. And here you can see what is exposed to Home Assistant. And this is what is available to you to use in either scripts, automations or wherever you want. So we have Auto Lock, which allows the device to be locked if needed. Then we have Away Mode, which is a switch that allows you to switch the setting if you are going away for a trip. Away Preset Days preset temperature, the status of the battery, the boost time, we said 5 minutes, child lock, that allows you to lock the smart valve, and by locking it doesn't mean it will not allow turning, it just means that the, any child can touch the display but cannot change or set anything through the display there. We have comfort temperature, echo temperature, is it normal, open or closed, maximum and minimum, nothing is set, Position of the valve, valve detection, type of the week, we said we are using 5 plus 2, and the window detection, which we can turn on. So what would be the best use case for this? Let's check my heating panel. This one gives me information on the every room in the apartment and also gives me status of my smart thermostats and valves. So we can add this here. 
let's press three dots, edit dashboard, add card, select thermostat here, select this as a new climate, type a name, moose, well, that's it. And this is the standard internal thermostat for the Home Assistant. Or if you have HACS, I would suggest that you try a simple thermostat. Add card. And we now have two thermostats. They are the same, but visually pretty different. As you can see, you can turn them off. You can initiate the heating, you can put it to auto, you can select the presets here, for example, comfort, which will change the temperature, away, or schedule. Here you see the information or the room temperature. This is currently 26.5. It is a bit higher than it should be, but what we can do is we can go to Zigbee to MQTT, Find here device, go to exposes and change this. And now, as you can see, the temperature has changed for two additional degrees less. So what are my thoughts on this device? It's perfect device, especially for the price. The link to this item is down in the description of the video and yes, it is affiliate link. But as you can see, currently it is on sale for $47.30 with additional $1.40 shipping from China. But if you are in the EU, you can use the Czech warehouse and then the price is $42.28 with $3.45 shipping, which is great. There are other options for buying, but they are not available currently from the EU warehouse. And they include valve with the gateway, a bundle of valves with the gateway, only two valves, more valves, more valves or much, much more valves. If you compare it with the prices from Tado, let's look at the single valve. It's $47 or $49 with the shipping. And the valve with the gateway is $67. Tado is currently selling kit that includes the hub or gateway with the smart valve for 130 euros. And just smart radiator thermostat, which you cannot use if you do not have a specific Tado gateway or a hub, for 80 euros. So for me, this is really a good buy, especially since I've seen that it works great. Mind you, I do not know how long the batteries live. In Tado, I do have to change them at least once through the heating season. I hope that batteries in these valves can also work for one heating season, at least. One other thing you have to keep in mind. In my setup, I have smart thermostat from Tado and smart valves. And what it does, it allows me to initiate or make call to heat from any smart valve. When smart valve needs heat, it will close the other valves, open the valve where it needs to heat the room and initiate heating from my gas boiler. And this is done through the smart thermostat and the relay smart thermostat has inside. This one, if you do not have any smart thermostat or any smart relay that can control your gas boiler or whatever you are using for the heating of the water in your radiators, it will only open or close the valves when the temperature is needed or where it is not needed. It cannot initiate heat in such setup. So if you want to initiate heat, you will have to buy some device, whatever device, you can hook up to your boiler or heater for the hot water in the radiators to be able to control it from home assistant. I have seen a couple of devices that can do that, but I haven't tested them myself. What is my verdict about this device? I really do like it. I wish I knew about this four or five years ago, but unfortunately they didn't exist. At this point, my setup is working great with Tado, and if I will be buying more devices, I will definitely go for Tado. But if you look at the investment, I have three smart valves and one smart thermostat. You can figure out what is the difference in overpaying by going to Tado. And also, Tado has a specific app. It cannot work directly with Home Assistant. In my setup, 
This smart thermostat valve was set up without using any Tuya or similar app, any cloud connection, except my Zigbee CC2652RB stick that I'm using to control Zigbee devices. So go figure, cloud service, and yes, there were a couple of outages, and yeah, my heating stopped working then, and a local only service. So if you are looking for a device that is similar to this, I would definitely recommend this one. And this is it for this Home Assistant How-To with Bearded Tinker. I really do hope that you did like this video. And if you did like this video, please give me a thumbs up, because it means a lot to me, but also helps with the YouTube algorithms. If you have this device or something similar, please drop me a line either on the Discord server, the link to Discord server is in the description of the video, or leave a comment down in the comment section below. And I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.